Cypress Canyon, who is also the organizer of this event, and much of this would not be possible without. It. So we would love to have a little round of applause. <laughs> pursuing wealth, stuff, and the illusion of how to satisfy our egos. There's nothing shameful about money. In fact, it's quite necessary and useful. Excess and the pursuit of external stuff to define us is a setup for failure. Winning becomes losing because when we get what we want, we're already immediately beginning to lust after the next thing we think it is that will satisfy ourselves. This becomes a vicious, outwardly focused cycle. The dependence upon mass consumption for our happiness versus the investment in our own social and emotional capital is what I'm talking about. Internal excellence. I'm going to share a little story with you. I call it my personal Titanic. As the economic world went to hell in a handbasket, this is what my world looked like. Divorce, economic disaster, my homes, yes, plural, being foreclosed upon, my children's displacement from their routines and their lives, mental and physical meltdown of a close family member. My world had simply imploded. Yes, this was my personal Titanic. But I determined, I was determined not to sink with this ship, nor be bound by this story as a victim. This is just a story, not what defines me. External abundance that most of us desire cannot save us in the midst of this kind of crisis. Resiliency must come from cultivating our own inner strengths. By going within and working on the answers to our life's most puzzling questions, we can find a sense of equanimity regardless of external circumstance. How we relate to the issue is truly the issue. Through self-mastery, we can weather any storm. So, I pose this thing to you called the inversion theory of joy. You see, flourishing in the new paradigm actually works in reverse. It's not what you think it is. The inversion theory of joy calls for us to look inside ourselves to define happiness. It requires we define what flourishing means to each one of us. Many of us now have less stuff, but we are not less valuable. In fact, many of us have become more creatively rich. When we look inside, we are afforded an abundantly wealthy set of choices. Choices represent the freedom to be happy or the liberty to be miserable. There are no prerequisites for happiness. Greater joy is available at any time by regulating our internal GPS. Conscious decision that the more complicated life becomes, the more deliberate and defined our resolve must be in order to thrive. Thriving trumps surviving. If you ask people how they're doing today, they'll probably answer with, I'm okay, I'm surviving. I'm just getting by. Is that really the goal in life? To make it from birth to
to death by merely surviving? We all come to go. It is our journey that defines us, and there's no escaping the final destination. So the noble goal is to make life your great adventure. Claiming our birthright to joy and eliminating a false sense of entitlement that others should provide it for you. What a concept that we're responsible for our own happiness. Can you imagine that? How does one thrive in complicated times? The answer is as simple or as complicated as we choose to make it. So underneath your seat there is a white pouch and it is your marshmallow. And I want to congratulate you all on behaving so nicely and not playing with it. So if you could open it up. This is your very own happiness first aid kit. To illustrate my point, we'll also say that happiness is in the bag. Inside this pouch are samples from dozens of scientifically proven skills and values that contribute to high levels of well-being. Stay with me here, and let's play a little bit as we experience the world in a different way. Ladies and gentlemen, if you could go inside your kit, first is glasses. And these are to give us a new perspective and, a, and choices of the way we view the world. The next is there's a mirror inside. Take it out and have a look. This is for insight and introspection. Next, a very, very important ingredient is chocolate, which is a reminder to live a little and eat dessert first. The next is bubbles. So if you could get out your bubbles, start your bubble engines. I'll wait. You can start blowing now, it's okay. You know, the marshmallow is loose, it's all right. And this is a reminder to walk in the world with curiosity, wonder, and delight. And the next is a little bit of a tricky one, but I couldn't think of a non-religious symbol, so I, I, I thought Kool-Aid would be appropriate, which sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you just have to believe. Sometimes you just have to have a little faith. Then we have a balloon for freedom and to remind us to expel all of our hot air. The next is a, a little mustache, so if you care to, I'd invite you all to just slap it on or slap it on the person next to you. And this is to have a reminder of childlike humor and to laugh at yourself, because let me tell you, this is what got me through my crisis. And this is to have a reminder. And next we have a candle for awareness and energy. Then we have a mini journal, and this is probably one of the primary tools for helping anybody through a hard time, which is to express your gratitude. You know, to look at, at, at look at what's right with life versus what's wrong, and to set intentions. So we're moving on here. And the last item are seeds, to remind us that we reap what we sow, and that we are filled with limitless possibilities. So see, this is my point. The inversion theory of joy is all about going inside in order to access qualities that bring us fully present and out into the world. At the end of the day, this happiness business comes down to our individual responsibility and choices to live passionately, love fully, through opening our hearts and mind. These are the keys to flourishing in the new paradigm. Thank you.